I'm here with you today to give you a quick rundown of the task tracker system. Now the nice thing about the task tracker system is we use a digital TV to display all the jobs that you are posting. So if you're used to writing up on a whiteboard, that goes away and then your time is shifted to here. And the benefit is, is you get a lot of great reporting and insight and in how your operation is running as soon as you start entering that information. We're gonna be covering the elite version. There's a lot of facets to that. It's just not only labor, but it's equipment, it's safety, it's employee communication, and most importantly, it's reporting. As you enter this information, you get to get great insights into how this board can actually make your operation better and more efficient. So let's just jump right in. The first thing we're looking at is the work board. Now the work board is where you're going to assign your jobs. We've already inputted our employees and we've done our task inputs. Now with task management, it's important to know these aren't just golf course tasks. These can be any task that you can imagine. So it doesn't have to relate to a golf course, even though that's where we started. It can equate to a lot of other things from ball fields to janitorial services to clubhouse maintenance, whatever you want to imagine you're assigning jobs to, Task Tracker can do it. I'm going to build a quick board. I'm going to go to Add Employees, and we have all of our employees in here, and I can add them simply by clicking on them, which makes it really easy for me to build up a board. I don't have to do this every time. I can actually take a day and copy it from one day to the next. So I can select this day, and I can copy it to the next day if I wish and I can select the employees that I want to copy, the tasks, if they have equipment assigned to them, notes, or I can even select specific employees. So a lot of options here. I'm going to go ahead and build up a task real quick. So we're just going to mow fairways. It's given it, we estimate about five hours for that. I'm also going to assign that to Joe, and I could do that every time where I can open up the system, put in mow fairways. I can write a note to to Rye here that he's going to start on the back nine and then I can do the same thing for Joe I can say he's going to start on the front nine now if you have tasks that if you have tasks that you really need to have duplication I'm going to show you how we can do that right now so front nine so let's say we want to have someone go and mow greens. And we're going to have three people do that. I'm actually going to use my quick click. I'm going to type in mow greens. And it takes four and a half hours. I'm going to say start on back nine. And I'll put no baskets as well. So we can enter as many notes in here as we want for the individual employee. And I just have to click on Harvey, Ron, and Mo, and they've actually assumed this information. Now, I can even set up subgroups of this, so I don't have to type in the notes, start on back nine, I can actually start up a back nine, or I can start up a section if I want for Mo Greens. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up, and we'll just make this really quick, we'll do changing cups, and we'll send two people out to change cups. So that's how you assign your, your first couple tasks. Once you've done that, you're going to go up to save. If you want to see what the work board looks like, you can hit this display board right here. This is what your TV is going to show. And you're going to see here we have changing cups, mowing greens, everyone's set. And if this was a little bit bigger screen, we'd see we have a calendar and even an alert bar down below, which I'll go ahead and show you how that works as we move through the system. Now, if we wanted to assign second jobs, I'm just going to do roughs for being quick and we have these set for a duration I also want to pay attention here I have my workday set for a duration meaning that all my guys are really working eight hours today Mo roughs is set to eight hours so when I click on Rye the system is automatically going to do the math and make this equate to eight hours so if I go ahead and assign those going down we can do that and we'll just put everyone on roughs and let's say I want someone to go ahead and check the birdhouses. And that only is going to take about an hour. And I assign that to Rye. Once we're past the eight hour mark, you're going to see here, it's not going to do the math for us anymore. It really doesn't know what to do. But it is going to alert us that this person is over the workday hour. So it is drawing your eye to see if this needs to be adjusted. And if it does, just simply go in, make your adjustment, hit your save, and you're done 
for the day on that. So now we've got our five, two, and one. Now we go back here, you can see it's automatically updated. So your board will automatically update as you make changes and hit that save button. You won't have to come into the office to make changes. You can actually do this on your smartphone. So the nice thing about this whole system is it's condensed to fit on your smartphone really easily. All these sections fit nicely. There's options to, to find each one. Now, if you don't like looking at it from an employee standpoint and you like looking at it from maybe, I wanna see how many people are mowing fairways. We do have a switch feature where we can look at the task and we can see how many people are changing cups, how many people are mowing fairways and how many people are doing greens for that day. So if you're used to sending out three people, you can make sure you have all three people. Those notes are right here and I can go ahead and click into them and I can make the changes to those people if I need to. So here's Mo, Ron and Harvey that are doing the mow greens. Now we can also assign equipment. So if we click on mow fairways, we click on this little gear, it's going to give us all of our favorite equipment. Now we have more equipment entered than just these John Deere mowers and these Toro work workmen. If I go to all equipment, I can see here's all the equipment I have in our system and you set this up. So depending on what type of equipment you have, we can see that equipment, but we'll just look at the favorite right now. So here I have, I can see I have four uh, Toro Workmans that are, are out of service, so I know not to use those, but here are all my fairway mowers. I've got Rye and Joe. Now I'm just gonna assign Joe number 10 and number two to Joe, and I can see how many hours are on these pieces of equipment. So if I'm trying to balance them out, I've got that right here really quick and handy. It keeps all the equipment around those same amount of hours. I can just close that out, and you can see I've assigned my mow fairways. You do the same thing with greens. I can pull these up and I can see I have the green master here. Simply just click on the people. Now here's an interesting thing. Ron actually has a favorite piece of equipment for this. It's the RM12. Uh, we're gonna ignore that for now and we're gonna go ahead and assign Mo. So it'll actually remember what piece of equipment someone likes and if you come to that person, it'll recommend that you assign that piece of equipment. So here we've got those pieces of equipment saved. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And I'm gonna go back and look at the work board and you're gonna see this auto refresh. And you're gonna see here, we've got our GM fairway mowers, our greens mowers already set up. Now you'll set up the naming acronyms for these. So you may not call it a GM for a greens mower. You may have a completely different name. That's all right. And you can do that in the system. Now here's another interesting thing. As we assign equipment, if we're missing some type of training, like if this person requires training for fairway mowing and it's not complete, it's gonna give you a warning. So if you're trying to abide by OSHA guidelines and make sure everyone's trained on that certain mower, we can attach safety cards to make sure that those people are trained. And if they're not, it'll go ahead and raise a red flag for you, or in this case, a yellow triangle. And you can go ahead and address that issue. Now, I don't have to assign equipment just this way, I can actually assign what we call smart equipment. It remembers what everyone's done in the past. Um, I can see that I have favorited pieces of equipment for these, meaning that the system is going to know what to assign, at least what type of equipment. All I have to do is just run the smart equipment algorithm and it'll automatically make my assignments based on my favorited equipment. And I can go ahead and hit apply changes. And now all the equipment has been assigned to those tasks that have a favorite designated to them. And I can go ahead and save that information. This was great for COVID when everyone was trying to keep that same piece of equipment and not have that intermix between the staff. This system really helped in organizing that part of the uh, job duties. We move over here into notes where you can keep daily notes. So I can type in a, a daily note here and I'll just type in daily notes so you can see where it shows up. We also have general notes which are notes that are pretty persistent. So this doesn't go away unless I delete it, but a daily note only applies the day that I made the note. A geo note allows you to actually go out and take photos on your phone and mark those locations. So if I wanted to uh, take a picture, I had this picture of a hole I found on our golf course. I actually drew a little arrow here on my phone and I uploaded it to the system here. Um, if that wasn't enough, we could also drop a pin on where that hole is. So I can see here that the hole is near this grove of trees. So we don't want golfers stepping in it. 
Uh, creating a geo note is really easy, and once you've uh, done the geo note and you're finished with it, you can go ahead and clear that geo note out, and now you're just left with the geo notes you have left to do. The alert is something that you can uh, set that's kind of separate from all the other notes, but it allows you to kind of highlight something special. People use it for lightning, people use it for parties, whatever it is that you want to highlight special. When you make an alert, that alert's going to show up down here. So this red bar will go ahead and show up. If there's no alert in the system, that bar will go ahead and disappear on this task tracker on the next refresh. So you can see here that bar is now gone and we just have this information. You're probably wondering what these icons are. These are PPE icons. Those can be set with a task. So if a certain task requires certain PPE to be taken, again, this goes to the safety aspect of it. The employee can see that when you got goggles, hard hats, steel toe boots, ear protection, gloves, chaps, um, chemical suit, respirator, whatever they need, um, we can put an icon up here for them to use. We'll move down to turf management. So we have mow patterns and we're going to be adding bunkers here shortly, but we can go ahead and set up a mow pattern. We have probably every mow pattern that we can possibly think of. And we didn't think of all these. We've actually taken requests from superintendents, but I can set a mow pattern eight to two. I can set what type of cleanup rotation that I want. Um, I can also set up um, if I have a, uh, step cut on there what I want that cut at and if I have rolling directions I can go ahead and set that and I can hit save now as that saves again back to the refresh when this board refreshes we're going to get an indication of the clock the mo pattern is an 8 to 2 which will get a graphical representation here on the green we'll get our roll direction and then we'll get our step cut uh, that we're going clockwise here along with our cleanup lap which is clockwise now you may be asking, what's this apply button? Well, if you create a schedule of mow patterns, I can just apply the mow pattern for that day. So as soon as I, if I always mow eight to two every other week, I can create a pattern for that. And then I can just hit apply and it's gonna go ahead and take my applied pattern and apply that. So in this case today, we're mowing a seven to one pattern. I can hit save. I don't have to remember what my mow patterns are it's a two week or three week or whatever your pattern is, you can set that up on the back end. If I'm not sure and I don't have a pattern, I can always look at the history and get my last uh, times that I mow green, at least my last three. So I see we were seven to one, eight to two, and then we did a push to six o'clock. So uh, we can look at that. And by the way, these are all customizable. So if you don't call it a seven to one or you call a black and white something different, you can go ahead and rename these on the program setup section. Height of cuts are also uh, nice and handy to have. We keep the height of cuts right here so we can see what T's and greens are. And this is a demo site, so I know this is not entirely accurate, but if I wanted to go ahead and change that height of cut today, I can go to point two, hit that save button, and now we've recorded that height of cut as being at point two. So the next portion is uh, chemicals. Uh, this is through our playbooks. This comes to the elite. We actually don't do the chemical program. We outsource that to playbook chemicals and uh, coverage system, excuse me. And you can create your new logs and do everything in playbooks and it's all imported into our system. And we can even see what kind of sprays we have going on uh, today. So it looks like we have uh, two sprays for greens and two apt sprays. Moving down here is a calendar. So if I have a calendar set up, I can go ahead and see what uh, calendar events I have. That's gonna include Google and Outlook. This is really handy for any kind of tournaments or any kind of special things that you wanna keep track of and show right here on the calendars. This will alert you to any calendar event. And the last is a task pool. And this really comes in handy if employees are using the employee mobile side of this, which is a whole nother app which we won't get into in this demo, but they can go ahead and self-assign tasks from this task pool. So if it's paint, paint the fence or clean out the parking lot or empty the trash, if they don't have a job, they can self-assign those jobs. So that's a highlight of this work board. Now there's a lot of other features up here where we can create new tasks. So if we have a task that's not available, we can go right in here and add that task quickly. We don't have to leave this page. 
we have a lot more options in here as far as being able to, to determine what jobs show at what time. So if I don't want employees to see the first job uh, right when they come in, I can set a timer to set that time to show at 6 a.m. or the second job doesn't show till they leave the break room. I have all those features. And then I have one last special feature where I can actually split this board into two boards and show the morning board uh, in the morning. And then if I have an afternoon board, I can have a completely different sh shift, different people on that afternoon board, and that board will automatically flip over. This is great if you're working a split shift and you have a morning and afternoon crew going out. They can see their board and you can manage it from one place. Next thing I'm going to go into is just our time management system. Really easy. These are populated by you. So I've created changing cups. You can create your own new task right here. And all you simply do is just type in the new task that you want to do, whether it's uh, mow roughs or if it's side winding, whatever you call it, you can do that. And then you're going to put the estimated hours it takes your crew to complete that job. So if you send out a crew of two to do roughs and you know it's going to take them six hours, you're going to put six hours into this estimated time. Sort order will allow you to bring those jobs to the top of your list. So if you want to see all of your summer jobs, changing cups, mow fairways, mow greens, or tees, I recommend bringing those sort order to the top just like I've done here. So when I look at the list, those are right at the top. I don't have to scroll through or search through anything. They're just available for me to select. And the grouping is for the reporting, which I'll show you here uh, shortly. You can also set these tasks to be either task tracker related, which are going to probably be your golf course tasks. And then we also have technician tasks. So this, this new task is just going to be created under the task tracker. But if you have technician, like it's a reparative or it's total reparative or John Deere reparative, you can go ahead and create those and uh, track those in the technician side. We also have a cool feature that allows you to, mul to multiply assign settings to a bunch of different tasks. So if I wanted to change these all sort orders to one, I could click on what I want to change, hit the sort order, these icons, hit one, and hit save, and now all these have now become one. Or if I wanted to change the duration of those times, or if I wanted to what tasks they belong to whether a task tracker task or a technician task. I can go through this and mass assign uh, these, these pieces to these jobs. The next thing is the employee mobile. And there is a bunch of features in employee mobile. So I'm just going to click into Joe. First of all, we're going to get Joe's first name, last name, what group he belongs to. You create these groups, you create these colors. So they're, they're up to you. Um, how you want to create them. You assign a wage. Every person gets this overtime card, which is 1.5 hours over 40. But if you have special overtime, you can create those cards. So if there's someone who is union that gets overtime on weekends, you can create those cards. It'll automatically go ahead and assign those tasks based on those overtime cards. And that money will flow down through those tasks when the workers is working on it. If you want to translate, you can do that right here. So if someone speaks a different language, every time you type a note or assign a job, it's going to send that off to Google. They're going to translate it. It's going to come back and it's going to show on your work board. So you don't have to do that if you're not fluent in uh, Spanish or whatever other language that you need it to be in. You can input any kind of worker information as far as mobile, home, and email. This is great for communication. Uh, any notes that you want to keep track of. So if uh, it's someone's doing a great job or someone's not doing a great job, this is like a little filing cabinet, especially if you're doing rehires in the spring and you can't remember, gosh, was that guy any good? You can go back to this file and you can and look up any kind of notes you had on this. This is our mobile setting. So here we can actually set up the user to be able to log in mobily to his job, see his schedule, see um, equipment, be able to self-assign equipment, whatever that he needs to do, he can do that in the employee mobile side. And I'm going to set that all up right here. And the kiosk is the same as the employee mobile, except for it uses a pin. So multiple people can use one kiosk where mobile is one person using one phone to clock his or her task. 
And then the last piece is just safety. So we can see every time that Joe's been trained in a certain task, whether it's walking, uh, walk mowing fairways or walk mowing greens, uh, fairway operations, we can see when those have been, when those were uh, completed and how long the expiration lasts. So we can see bunkers has no expiration, but we walk mow, mow uh, that's got 500 days left on it. And we can assign those to task as well. And then if those two don't match up, we're gonna get that little yellow triangle. So let's go into a report tracking. I'm just gonna jump into a live screen so you can kind of see. So if, if you are looking at this from a management point of view, this would be your um, MCO dashboard. You can see all the courses that you have um, and you can jump into any of those courses. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the Valley Club. I'm gonna run some reports and I'm just gonna look at his total tasks. And I'm just gonna look at a year's worth of data. So I'm gonna do the 19th. So right here, I'm gonna get a breakdown of all of his groups and he set these groups up on his own. You can change these groups, you can name them whatever you want, but setup, these are all the tasks that are involved in his setup group. And we can see we spent about 17,000 this year. And right now, the majority of that here is being spent right here in our changing cups. So a lot of that's being spent in changing cups. Um, and then we have the next probably biggest chunk being spent here in course setup, which is T's and, and all of that. So those are the two big chunks here. Going down to bunkers, we can see our big thing here is, is pretty much raking bunkers. And then we have all these small tasks, which equate to about 25% of the work there that goes to making sure the bunkers are playable. As you look through these, you'll see areas that you'll be surprised at, and it won't be the mow fairways because everyone has to mow fairways. It's going to be the trimming the irrigation heads or maintaining the waterways or maintaining the cart path edges or irrigation breaks. It's going to be stuff that's small that you don't realize that you're doing a lot of until you actually add it all up. And then you realize, hey, can we be more efficient in those areas? And uh, as well as just being efficient in those areas, it's about being efficient for the entire club. So in this case, uh, this course tracks how much time they spend on tennis, how much time they spend on course renovation that's not part of actually maintaining the golf course. And these all factor into the budget and they're able to move money around and be accurate with where money's being spent, which is a nice, nice feature. Task Tracker has a lot of these reports and they're kind of grouped by either employee reports or yearly reports or task reports, but you can run these. And if you find a report that you like, go ahead and hit the star to favorite it. Next time you go into that report, it's gonna be right there for you to select. So if you find something that you really like, like group dollars and hours, I wanna run this, and then I wanna export this to my Excel, I can go ahead and export this to a CSV file, and here it comes in Excel right there. Or if I wanna export this to a PDF, I can go ahead and create a PDF of this document and then I can save it or I can email it out however I want, want to go ahead and do that. And we'll wait for that to load. So here's that PDF right now. And here's all the information. So we'll go back here. So that's a little bit about the report tracking. A lot of, a lot of great features in here to look at. So uh, I encourage you, once you get the system, to go ahead and take a look at whatever it is you want to kind of measure, whether it's your height of cuts or whether it's your weather data. Um, you can go ahead and track all of those features within Task Tracker. The next piece that I'm going to cover just really lightly is the equipment management piece. So as I jump into equipment management, we, we arrange equipment management by the type, and then we look at it by the unit. So here we've got our hover mowers, and I'm not gonna do a lot in here because this is a live site. I'm actually gonna switch back to the other site so I can actually make some changes to show you how this works. I wanna look at my John Deere. Now you're gonna notice I have some status indicators. I see that I have eight mowers that are up and ready to go. There are none that are actually have issues, but I do have some real masters, one that has a red mark by it, indicating that it is disabled right now or red keyed. 
So I know not to use that. And that shows up when you're assigning equipment as well. So you don't assign a red piece of equipment that either the mechanic's trying to work on. So I'm just going to go into the John Deere. If I want to change the status of a piece of equipment, really simple, just to jump in here, hit disabled, and then that piece of equipment has been disabled. Or maybe there's something that's not quite right and I want to mark it as having an issue. I'm going to get that indicator that has an issue. Now we have the ability to assign work orders. So you can see here we've got a work order on fairway unit number five. And this is just a test, but I can see upcoming. I have my fall check coming up in 145 hours. I have my two hour service coming up in 195 hours. And you can see this piece of equipment only has five hours on it. So if I look at this equipment, it's gonna add hours based on how, much, how many times I'm assigning it and how many hours it's going out. If it gets off, I can easily go in here, make an adjustment. So you know what, this is at 100 hours. I'm gonna update it. Next time I go into this page, all of my maintenance here is gonna be adjusted, showing that I've got 50 hours coming up on this fall check. If I wanna go in and say, okay, I'm at 150, and we move ahead 50 hours, then that's gonna go ahead, that fall check is gonna fall into our current. So that is a triggered work order for us and we know we need to go ahead and bring that up. And I can just click on the fall check, and I can see here this is, uh, I, can add, I can add labor history, so if I worked on this for an hour, I can go and add myself for an hour to this, for this fall check. I can add parts, so maybe if I had to do some kind of throttle cable or, or something like that, I can go ahead and add that piece of equipment or add that part, $35. And then if I have any other stuff that I want to talk to, any logs that I want to maybe make a note on, I can make a note on this uh, job that maybe we're waiting for another part to come in so we can't complete this. But once it's done, I can go ahead and mark this as complete. And it's going to fall down into the completed section here. And the next time I refresh it, that fall checks here and a new fall check has been created for the amount of time, which is 150 hours out so in 150 hours this fall check will also move back into current great way to keep track of all of your maintenance of your equipment uh, you can create work orders on the fly or you can go ahead and create scheduled work orders that auto generate just like this fall check did so move back into this uh, as we start to actually have equipment run we can run some reports so we can see what equipment's been up and down which is a nice feature to be able to tell ROI so ferry mower 3 has been down for the entire year I don't know if that's a great unit to keep around I can also look at it from a cost standpoint so I can see how much money we're spending uh, per year on each of the fairway mowers so we haven't spent anything on fairway number three but fairway number 12 we know we've accumulated for four hundred dollars in repairs this includes both labor and dollar repairs that we're spending on these these types of equipment. So if you're looking for ROI on what piece of equipment we should replace, I would start looking here and see if there's a place a uh, piece of equipment that's maybe being a lemon and producing higher repair costs than all of the others. So that's a little bit about the equipment. Super easy to add a piece of equipment. We click new, we select the manufacturer, we give it a name. If it's a real master, give it a short name. This is what is going to show up on your board, whether it's that TM or the GM. You give it that short name, and then once you give it a short name, you go ahead and you're going to assign units to that, uh, to that equipment type. So you don't have to type in all that information every time. Very simply to go in and say, I want to add a new unit. We just got a new John Deere 2500. And... Uh, Let's see here, I'm gonna go ahead and make this unit number eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on eight here. And now I've, I've gone ahead and I, I would create that, that unit right here. Uh, the next piece would be if I wanted to go in and look at fairway unit number 12 and I wanted to look at maybe the information status like how often this was up and down I can actually have a history of that I can see what employees have been assigned to this piece of equipment so if I'm looking to see hey which employee was on this piece of equipment last I can actually even see if there was a note that maybe I broke a reel on this I can see all of that information uh, right here on this 
on this actual point of the employees so we can hold employees accountable for when they take a piece of equipment. So that's a little bit about the equipment side of things. Uh, real quick, just safety. These are where we create our safety cards. I'm not going to jump into that too much in this tutorial, but we can create as many safety cards as we want and we can assign those to both tasks. So I can go into task and I can assign safety and here's a rake bunker safety card. So everyone has to uh, be trained in raking bunkers to do this task. I know it sounds silly with changing cups, but um, that's what is assigned. And if I'm wrong, I can go ahead and delete it. And uh, those safety cards aren't required for that, for that task anymore. I can do the same thing for equipment. So if I go to the John Deere and I go to safety, anyone taking this John Deere 2500 has to have the safety uh, safety cards completed in order to do this, uh, in order to operate this piece of equipment. So uh, th that's also helps keep everyone safe on, on the same page. When we started, we only had about two of these boxes that had customizable features, but basically as we've moved now uh, almost seven years on this project, there are so many customizable features from scheduling a mow pattern by the week or by multiple weeks that we can do or whether we want to have our weekly hours for the job board, those workday hours be the same for every day or create a weekly schedule. We can do that. Uh, if we want to have whole locations that we want to track, all of these are available within the system to make some changes so your board becomes really customizable to your operation. So if there's something that you wanted to do, there's a good chance that it probably does it. We just have to set the features in order to make that work. Now real quick, I'm going to highlight on the technician side. So I'm going to flip over to the technician side. The technician side has a lot of the features that the task tracker side has. However, they have this work board that's a little bit different. On this side, we have all of our work orders that are due for these pieces of equipment. So I can see here on the John Deere 2500, I've got the check, I got to check the tires, and I've got this test work order. I can actually see what jobs are involved in those. So these each have one job, so these are really simple. Um, I can look at this 50 hour, and I can see here that we have an oil change and tighten bolts. And if I wanted to assign that to someone, I've got Joe and myself over here. Say if, if it's me, if I'm one of the technicians, I can go ahead and assign these jobs, these change oil and tighten bolts to me, and that's going to show right here. And then if I said, you know what, that's really a priority, I can go ahead and move those to the top. So if I want these to be at the top, now it's at the top for me. So if I have my mobile version on, I'm going to see that those job or those work orders at the very top of my list to complete on my mobile app. The mechanic also has a TV which goes ahead and displays not only the work orders that are due, but any employees that have been assigned work orders or any of that. So uh, this will go ahead and work very similarly to the display board of the task tracker side. It also gives you an idea of equipment over here, what equipment has issues, what equipment's down, what equipment has work orders due on it at that time. Equipment management is the exact same on there. This is their task management, which is the exact same as the task tracker side. Um, they only have one task, but I can create more, more tasks here for them to go ahead and enter for their work order pieces. I will show you one thing when I go back to the work order. If I do a job uh, for a work order, let's say I'm here on this fault, this oil, and I want to say I worked on this for an hour. This information will also flow over to the task tracker work board. So I'm going to go back to mine here. And you're going to see this unassigned maintenance. I can see that I worked on this work order 180 fall check, and uh, this is this is what I did, right? Oh, here, right here. This I, here's my hour. Here's my oil change that I've done uh, for myself. This was the other task I changed in the equipment management piece. 
You can also keep track of your vendors. So we have a list of all of our vendors. They have phone numbers, reps, uh, very easy to get a hold of. Uh, we can click in there and we can see the representative address and the contact information. We can also see our parts as well. So we can actually look at our inventory of parts that we have available for us to choose from, what the cost of those are, uh, any OEM numbers or vendor SKU numbers that you want to use. Um, those can also be placed here as well. So that's a real brief overview of the entire system. There's so many more features that we didn't get involved in, but I encourage you to kind of play around. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. If you'd like a more in-depth demo, we're happy to do that. If you want to try it out, we're also happy to uh, let you try that out. With that, I hope everyone enjoys uh, the demo that we've uh, presented today and look for more features shortly. Have a great day. Thank you.